for part two of the uh, ICAST display units and the uh, flight display units as well. This is the 747 ERS, so it's slightly different. As you can see here, it's got two switches. One is called inboard CRT, lower CRT. The inboard CRT is that one, which is the inboard display. And the lower CRT is this one, which is the lower ICAS display. On the 747-8 that I showed you before, we had an electronic checklist selector here, but this one doesn't have electronic checklist. It's just got the display select panel without the ability to select left or right display, as you can see there. We don't have that ability to say left, left is inboard, right inboard, and center display like we have on 747-8. So because of that, the 747-400 has inboard CRT selector, lower CRT selector. And similarly, if this fails, the primary flight display fails, it would automatically shift onto the inboard display at a critical moment, say at takeoff. However, the pilot can also manually select it. So it says the PFD, you can see that. And it does, and it blanks out that one because it assumes that's failed. So you'd have the PFD on the inboard display. What it also does is you can select the ICAS. And there's the ICAS, which you saw me do the same thing as I did on the 747-8. Uh, so the 400 can also do the same thing, 400 ERF on the inboard display. Then we have the lower CRT, which is that one, where we normally would have the electronic checklist on the 747-8. This airplane doesn't have an electronic checklist, but what we can do is we can select the ND. So if that failed, for example, I could have the ND there. Look at this. We've got the ND there and there. The FO has exactly the same switch. If the first officer moves her switch or his switch, as the case may be, to ND as well for the lower CRT, it remains on the captain's side. Whatever I've selected, the captain overrides the first officer's selection. I can also select the primary ICAS on the lower CRT. Here, primary ICAS. And when I do that, it removes, blanks out that one, and assumes that that upper ICAS has failed. So it has everything represented there with a compact display for the rest of the information, like oil pressure, oil temperature, and stuff like that comes up here. Oil temperature, as you can see there. And we also have the vibration and the ECS information, like pressurization, comes up there. Ordinarily, all this would be on the upper display. So if I take that back to normal, there, it returns the upper ICAS, primary ICAS, to normal, and the lower ICAS to normal display. Now the display select panel, this one, can select systems just like it before. You know, I can select hydraulics, fuel, and the ECS and things like that. But I can also select them here, so 747400. Inboard display fails, uh, outboard display fails automatically, transfers PFD onto there. If it doesn't transfer automatically, the pilot can select it by going PFD. Same as the 747 8. That's the inboard display. It also has lower CRT, which is that display. If the if this display fails automatically, it shifts all the information onto that lower display. So if that fails, automatically the information is shifted to the lower display. The pilot can also move the ND information. If the ND failed, for example, I can then select ND on there, ND, and the ND will come and shift onto there. The only difference is it doesn't blank that out because it hasn't actually failed, but if it did fail and I selected ND, I'd still have the nav display on there. So I'd have that blanked out, but the PFD showing blanked out ND information showing there. I can also select primary ICAS. The primary ICAS is this one. If 
if I select primary ICAS on there, then it assumes that has failed and moves all the information with a compacted display for oil pressure, temperature, and vibration, fuel flow, or everything moves onto here in a compact display format. The only thing that doesn't change is the EPR retained its normal uh, display as it would on the upper display. So let me put it back to primary and see what happens. It goes back and there's the EPR. It's always represented, even in the compacted form. It will be represented. But once again, the PFD always remains on both sides. First of all, the same switches over there, two switches. Whereas the Dash 8, remember, had separate switches for left inboard, right inboard display. Instead of that, it's each individual pilot has the switches in front of her or him, as the case may be. Okay? Um, that's about it, really. That's the main difference, is that these two are on each pilot's panel compared to the Dash 8, which didn't have those two. It had a multi-function display select, but left and right was here, as opposed to for each individual pilot. That's the displays on the 747-400. That's it. Later.